gentlemen, welcome back to Rechu's Talks. This is the seventh edition, and I'm so excited to have these two wonderful individuals with us on our talk tonight. I have no less than Dana Lubner, who is the head of advocacy for Rent Responsibly, and the one and only Dave Krause, who is the founder and CEO of Rent Responsibly. Welcome, guys. Tell us um, where you are at and, and how you are tonight. So we are here today in Denver, Colorado. We've got Dave Kraus flew in from Fort Worth, Texas to come and visit us. Um, so we're here in my condo. Yeah, and I traveling in during COVID, I took off my hazmat suit for, uh, for this video interview. And I feels wonderful being in the travel industry to actually just get on a plane and go somewhere again. And I will say it does feel very safe. And um, I'm really pleased to see, you know, planes flying in the air. Uh, so I, you know, I, I, I envy you. The last flight that I had was on the 12th of March back from the short stay show in London, back to Zurich. And since then I have only seen aircrafts from the outside uh, on very rare occasions. Uh, but now it's great to have you here and 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 have us uh, talk about rent responsibly overall and and the vacation rental industry as well. I mean, you guys have been super active and and obviously we are great followers on what rent responsibly is all about. And I think we want to focus on that a little bit more to tell our audience what rent responsibly really is all about. You know, I <clears throat> I had to choose between my AGL T-shirt tonight and my rent responsibly T-shirt tonight. And I decided to wear my AGL. Otherwise, uh, you know, it would have been sort of forgotten where we're at. But I'm obviously a great follower of of Dave, and and we've spent some incredible moments together in our industry. And you know, one thing that we share is is passion. And and I always say, you know, we need to be passionate about what we do. And and despite the time, sometimes we 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 consider to be crazy, but we need to be passionate because especially in those times where we said. Uh, vacation rental is going to recover the fastest from any travel vertical, which it has. So we've proven right once again. But obviously, there needs to be a little bit more than that as we now raise uh, professionalism, as we raise the attention to a lot more travelers um, coming to our vertical. And we talk about that uh, further in our conversation. But be to start the conversation off, <clears throat> we talked a lot about rent, rent responsible. We have different type of associations and, and other players with industry. Can you tell the audience what re Rent Responsibly is really all about? Sure, I'd be glad to. And I, I wanna pick up on one thing you just said before I jump into that. You said vacation rental, short-term rentals will be the first to recover. And I think that actually, I mean, it's absolutely true. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. But one thing that I think this gives us an opportunity to do is actually bring more people with us than ever before. And you've talked a lot about how we've been kind of stuck at this 30% usage of short-term rentals, uh, at least in the United States, based on focus right studies for about five years. And if you, you listen to you know, CEO of Booking, Glenn Fogel, he said that the use, uh, the people choosing short-term rentals has doubled in 2020 over 2019. Of course, there might be some uh, mathematic reasons why that actually computes for him, but at the same time, cities know that they need to recover too. So if we can think of recovery of short-term rentals, vacation rentals as a proxy for travel and the economic well-being of a community, we have a lot to offer communities um, by way of, of economic lift and, and providing travel uh, lodging opportunities, which we know has downstream and knock-on effects economically. So. That said, I think that's that's the preface to explaining what what we do and, and why we exist. You know, Rent Responsibly is a mission driven organization, period, which means we had to define our mission first. It's the first thing we did. What's our mission? Our mission is to build a sustainable community or excuse me, to build sustainability for short term rentals in every community. That is a what I would say a different concept than, than many people uh, think, because we start with the broader community outside of short-term rentals, think about where we fit into that, and then think about sustainability. So we're thinking five and 10 years down the line. 
And once you start thinking in those terms, you start to see where the real friction is with communities and where that friction uh, is, manifests is where we focus. And that friction right now, a lot of it is neighbor nuisance issues. Co COVID has brought this uh, phenomenon, or at least in the media phenomenon of COVID parties and, and uh, nuisance issues and whatnot. But there are a lot of ways that we as, uh, as Rent Responsibly are helping cities not only solve these issues, but also view our, our community differently as a partner. And uh, to do that, we need to get together and build um, uh, more unity and in, in how we're unifying the short-term rental community is uh, as an online tech-enabled community-first uh, association. We can go more into that, but you know, we're really a, an association born in this century and building a future uh, that will carry us into to centuries to come. So we're very forward-looking. Boom. And <clears throat> can everybody follow to what Dave just said? Let's start to break it down a little. You know, there is a lot of messaging and 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 ideas and 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 mission and vi visions that you're trying to achieve. And I would like to break that down a little bit. So first of all, you talked about you talk about sustainability. So maybe Dana, what's your definition of sustainability in in relation to rent responsibly? Well, I'd say you know when you think about sustainability means it has to have the legs to stand on independently um, on its own. So my thought there is that if we can make sure we're bringing all voices to the table, the people that are not supporters of short-term rentals, the people that are afraid of new faces every day, the people that just simply don't understand it and therefore they stop listening, um, the people that are huge supporters of it, all of those tables have to, have to collectively come to the, this table and be able to feel like they are being heard in order for there to be a win-win scenario um, that everyone can say that they're overall comfortable with for there to be sustainability. So if one side has a landslide win, that probably means the other side is not happy. And so if there is an ordinance that's passed, it probably will get brought up again later to have that discussion all over again. So I think it really is more than it's ever been before about bringing all of those voices into the conversation and giving everyone that airtime. Wow. So, so how do you differentiate yourself from, from any association that is in the space as well, or, or from any other players? Can you, can you show, can, can you give us some, some vision on that as well? Sure. I'd be glad to. And I, I will, I will say we, you know, my first answer to what is rent responsibly, it, it's a, maybe an idealistic answer, a theoretical or philo philosophical answer. But at the end of the day, the, the answer to your question of what how we're different is that we're focused on the local level. So building the atomic, you know, the lowest, the lowest, uh, smallest geographic unit in our world, our ecosystem is the local municipal level. And guess what? that's where the rules and regulations are made for our industry at least in the united states it's different um, in some countries around the world so when you think of these lofty ideals sustainability thinking 10 years out reducing friction with the city reducing friction with neighbors what we're doing fundamentally and this is what's different than any other association out there is we're helping local communities unite and build a microcosmic association which is in our networks we call them chapters so we we, uh, we definitely want to bring some actual concrete examples Dan, um, into this we work in santa fe is one example and i think we can use that um and i'm also uh leading the group in dallas so maybe we can we use those two but different than say the vrma or uh, any other association that's really focused on on a kind of a national or even statewide level we focus on the local level and making it really easy for local uh, stakeholders to band together that's one number two is we think that the short-term rental owner host and manager is just one piece of the puzzle in terms of membership in these local organizations as you know simon our each reservation, each each property, each management company is basically a hub of 
many other employment and economic relationships, whether it's to the local coffee shop, the cleaners, the man, the on down the line, pool care, every single type of piece of a property management company supports the local economy, including the traveler spending and economic uh, impact that, that falls out of just having more travel. And if we can look at that whole ecosystem, invite them to one place and make it very easy for them to connect with one another, that is the platform, that is the association we're building on the local level. And then again, as I mentioned, they're networked into uh, the broader Rent Responsibly network. We're building the tools and we're enabling the, the local communities to band together. And guess what? It's not a self-serve opportunity. We realize that we have to help them do that. Uh, people don't you know, wake up in the morning with, as Dana calls it, the 25th hour. This project we're doing is mostly using people's extra time which is a joke in property management. Nobody has extra time. And so we we pride ourselves on making every hour spent and every dollar spent go 10 times further than it did before rent responsibly existed. And that's how we're going to leverage uh, the platform that we're building. Wow. I mean, at the end of the day, this is well beyond just being ideological, I guess, and, and to where you started your uh, statement. And, and I could not agree with you more. I just, you know, when I start thinking about the different stakeholders and, where, and what mission you guys are, I think it's just an astronomical challenge for you uh, to master, right? I mean, you know, turning 15 years back when I met Brian Sharples and and when I asked him, when he came to Zurich Airport, I asked him, you know, what's your mission, uh, Brian? He says, you know, I want to make the vacation rental industry the most respectable travel vertical in the world. And, you know, and since then we've, we, we made we became friends uh, for obvious reasons and 15 years down the down the line the question is how far are we and now when you when you mention that and just thinking about all the amount of stakeholders that we have with our industry it's a massive challenge so you know without with you saying you know we don't want to be just ideological but we can actually take actions i'd love to hear a little bit more about these you know having what you said before, the stakeholders in our industry are endless, right? And, and the value that we contribute, and we don't just take need to take hotels or any other contributor in a, in a travel vertical. I think our vertical goes beyond many others in terms of stakeholders that we create. And 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 it's and and we we keep adding as we make uh, check-in seamless and 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 check-in processes seamless and and many other things. So. So how do you actually go about this? I mean, this is a monster task to get the stakeholders together. And on top of that, educate, you know, the average, let's say, uh, human being in our in, in our uh, surrounding what vacation rental is really all about. I mean, that seems to be unbelievable. While considering that still 70% of the people in the United States have not rented yet, right? Let me tee up Dana to answer that. But how, so the question is, how do we get these stakeholders into, uh, into uh, to connect with one another locally? Well, the, the first thing to, to realize before you even jump into that is people want to connect to each other. So it's not like we're asking people to do something that they don't naturally want to do. It's just not been made easy before. So that's first thing to understand. The second thing to understand is we haven't perfected it yet. We, by no means, I mean, you like if you're on our calls, we just had a team call about an hour ago. We're figuring this stuff out every day, working with the people locally to see what works and what doesn't. Um, so just please, if anybody's listening and thinks, man, these guys are rocking and rolling, they have it all figured out. I mean, I'll be the first to admit, I think we have a great deal of potential, but we haven't figured it all out. This will be a group effort. But to tee Dana up, we're going to talk a little bit about how just maybe how the Santa Fe group is working right now and how they're bringing more voices in. And yeah. Um, the interesting thing is a lot of people don't know their stakeholders until you educate them how much they actually do rely on the short term rental industry. So it's it's an opportunity to open the door to conversations that they can be like, wow, I had no idea there were this many short-term rentals around me. If they're not a present business owner and they just own the business, they're going to be even less likely. So where it really starts for us is bringing the hosts that are in a destination to a webinar or to an event and really saying, okay, hey, we've got some um, 
interested members that want to start a team here, whether it's regulations that are coming um, or if there's just somebody that's raised their hand and identified themselves as realizing the value that having this community-based advocacy group can bring. So it starts there. And then we build out a leadership team. You know, an alliance is great, but if there's no one driving the plane, then you don't really have that direction or those goals defined or those um, missions you want to accomplish. So it's about what we first do is help build that leadership team, identify those that want to raise their hands. They see a value in being part of that conversation and then getting that leadership team built. Uh, we help identify different subcommittees and people will raise and volunteer themselves for specific subcommittees where they own certain tasks. One of the, just to get into the nitty gritty, because I think it's helpful to understand the level in which rent responsibility really is rolling up their sleeves. Um, there's a specific subcommittee that's called community liaison. And what that subcommittee is responsible to do is to identify the different stakeholders, introduce them to the alliance and the leadership team and explain to them how much business if whether it's an economic impact study that's been done or just naming the number of guests that they've sent there or had visiting at their own property over the last year and painting that picture, building that relationship, whether it's in person or sending some sort of materials and inviting them to join the Alliance. So the Alliance isn't just hosts or it's not just um, property managers, it's the businesses that are also in support so that all of those voices when in need for a public comment or written testimony can join in the conversation. You know, you see the people um, oftentimes during public comment that speak up are the hosts because they have the greatest like perceived amount to lose there. But the businesses that say, I also depend on this, this, this revenue, especially during an economic crisis, um, those voices are even that much more powerful. So it really does. Can I interrupt here, Dana, yeah. for a second? I mean, do they even know these these stakeholders where, like, where, like from what their business depends on? I mean, that 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 is incredible to me. I'm just thinking, my family in our in our last autumn holidays, we go to the restaurant. I mean, the guy who served us the meal that we spent there, he would have no clue if I actually stayed in a hotel or in a vacation rental, right? So so that's an interesting one because I, I, to your point, I, I would, the noisiest is obviously going to be the host because he's at the start of the food chain, right? Next to the marketplaces. Yes, we just did this exercise with our Santa Fe group last week. I said, write down right now, write down three businesses that you rely on to run your short-term rental. Now, write down three businesses you know you send your guests to. And I said, all right, you've got six businesses right now that you need to call and have them show up at this public works committee meeting that's happening today. And these are the people you have to ask. And they had an economic impact study that was done there. So that was super powerful leverage collateral to send over and say, look at these numbers. So it creates a more helpful case for them in those instances. But yeah, it's taking them the time to pause and really identify that and then being willing to dedicate the time to have the conversation. Wow, that's that. So now this is starting to make a lot of sense in how you're bringing these groups together and how they can collaborate and obviously create a far, you know, all these stakeholders, a bigger noise around the industry as well and and, and really voice their challenges and, 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 and do something, you know, overcome challenges that I might have regulatory issues or, or, or whatever else. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I could throw another question that if this is growing the way you, 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 you envisage this to grow, right? For me, this would be a perfect phone call for Brian Jeske and say, Hey, uh, Dave, just sell us that thing. We'll, we'll take it over. Right. Is, does that make sense or does that not make sense at all? I don't think, uh, well, let's put it this way. I think the whole entire ecosystem is only going to benefit the more cohesive, the more effective, the more united, the more uh, our message to the rest of the world is a little more disciplined, right? And that comes through, frankly, professionalizing, I think, not just the industry and working on our own flaws, but frankly, professionalizing the process by which we are actually uniting. And that's that's where Rem yeah. Responsibility's role is. So yeah. I, to, to your question about Brian Chesky, if, 
if, if they wanted to, to do anything with it. First of all, we work with Airbnb. They're a partner of ours. Expedia Verbo, fantastic partner of ours. We're, we're, our list of partners is, is growing uh, rapidly. And the idea is this, is, this is to me a little bit of a field of dreams, which if you're not familiar, Simon, because I know baseball hasn't quite infiltrated Switzerland uh, as no. much as, as, as maybe this uh, analogy uh, would necessitate to make any sense. It's basically an if you build it, they will come mentality. And, right, and the reason for that is we're building it. I consider myself one of the biggest cheerleaders and I married a cheerleader. So I've, I grew up, I have a ton of pom poms in my house. And uh, sometimes I, I, I just use them to cheerlead for short term vacation rentals because I think there is so much amazing stuff that our industry, our community has to offer on a local level. And guess what? All we have to do is communicate that to the world around us. And again, sustainability five years from now, we're not going to have to explain to the local restaurant how much business they get from yeah. these traveling families and things like that. But guess what? That only happens if we can come around the table to do this as a group without preferring one partner or one vendor or one OTA and in their interests. We are a down the middle independent organization. So whether, you know, Brian Chesky wanted to do whatever or Expedia Verbo wanted to do whatever, we look at it through the lens of our mission. Is this good for the community outside of short-term rentals? Okay. Is this good for the short-term rental community? Is this good for our members? And as long as it checks down against our mission, we do it. And I don't really see a, a scenario where any sort of corporation, uh, you know, redirecting our energy or effort. Frankly, they're very happy we're here and happy to get behind us because we're doing a damn good job in the couple markets that we're doing. So we're proving the model right now. I mean, scaling is going to be a challenge, Simon. You you know that uh, with any with any organization. But I will say that we're we're starting to cook with gas. Excellent. So I'm I'm really glad you're not challenging me on my knowledge about baseball. The only thing I remember when I was a baseball match in the United States, the big hot dogs that I ate. That's probably the only thing I remember, and the party around it. So, uh, so let's, <laughs> let's move on from that. But going back to my question initially, so, you know, when you talk about, we talked about stakeholders here, right? And, and we're saying, okay, you know, these, these marketplaces, doesn't matter who it is, obviously in terms of Airbnb, Booking Verbal, Expedia and others, um, you know, these marketplaces are very concentrated. So while you're having one destination, 2000 restaurants, you have four marketplaces um, that drive demand next to the direct demand that most of your uh, hosts uh, who are be probably being part of it responsibly are, are taking uh, demand from these from these marketplaces. So how do you balance that in terms of, of course, it makes sense for them to partner with you. It makes sense for them to, to support you. But at the end of the day, they act in their own interest as well. And you need to balance that. You need to weigh this off while these marketplaces play a hefty role in the entire rental a value chain uh, across all the different uh, uh, value providers, but they're playing a, a massive uh, game in there. And how do you balance that in interacting with local uh, communities and, 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 and everything else while these marketplaces have so much power uh, over the generating the demand that at the end these businesses need? Let's face it, I mean, the, rent, the, the rental business, the short-term rental business does not exist if there is no demand. So obviously they're playing a massive role and, and how do you balance that with rent responsibly to deal with these massive marketplaces? It's a great question. And I, I love that it's like, it's edging near some co a controversial answer, right? Let's get, let's, 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 uh, let's get some views and listens on this podcast. Let's get some controversy. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is it's not controversial. Airbnb, VRBO, Expedia, pri you know, the two primary uh, players, I would say, that have contributed in the United States to advocacy and, and kind of getting the message out at the local level. I think they'd be the first to admit that it's just kind of an awkward fit for them to lead, right? They are very happy to contribute when somebody else is willing to lead. And that's that took place well before Rent Responsibly. You know, in many markets, there was somebody, Dana, I mean, Dana stuck her hand up in Denver and said, I want to lead creating the Mile High Host uh, with a group and Airbnb and VRBO came in and said, hey, how can we help? 
all we're doing is trying to create a system for doing that. And right now we're not able to open up, you know, 50 cities at once. Sure. But right now we we went to them first and said, look, this is what we're trying to do. I'm in Dallas, you know, my, my property, I have one rental property, it's in Dallas. I, I knew there was an ordinance coming. I got on the short-term rental task force. Again, let's go to something specific and concrete here. My first two calls, when I had to figure out how am I going to, you know, it, this idea, if you build the Dallas Short-Term Rental Alliance, Field of Dreams, if you build it, they will come. How do you get them to come? Them being the stakeholders, the owners, the hosts, the managers locally. You go to Airbnb and VRBO who have, you know, the captive audience and, and they've been fantastic partners. They sent messages out, helped folks find the Dallas Short-Term Rental Alliance. We now have hundreds of owners, hosts and managers in Dallas that never would have known each other, never would have had a place to, to build a community, but now they do. Now they do. And it's called the Dallas Short-Term Rental Alliance and Rent Responsibility's job is just to support it. And to Dana's point, we built a leadership team. There's 12 of us that meet regularly to help plan. And uh, we're having our second uh, webinar, citywide webinar to, to distribute information about what we've done. That's the formula, Simon. I think you'll, you'll the beauty of this is Rent Responsibly ha will have uh, a lot of people saying, man, now I have an outlet for an energy or something I was trying to do in the first place, but just didn't have an organized way to do it. So in a way, I don't feel like we're inventing too much. We're actually copying from things that have worked around the country. We're just trying to bring professionalism and formula to it. Professionalism formula. Now let's the, the, the third piece of the formula uh, we have learned in the last week that uh, the U.S. has a very complex political system as well, and therefore regulatory issues are of a challenge as well. And uh, and obviously, piece of this conversation, right? So, so we have we have marketplaces, we have the micro ecosystem in the short-term rental in the destination, and then we have regulatory issues as well. And and obviously, that's part and parcel of, of what rent, rent responsibly wants to achieve because you need to bring these stakeholders together as well. While we have over 2000 legal communities, you know, legal councils across the nation with different regulatory issues. And you, you I guess you want to make an impact there as well. How does that last piece, the, the local government regulatory issues fit into rent responsibly strategy? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, and you mentioned that, you know, the presidential election was last week. It, it, I would say that is uh, politics turn up and turn up the volume. They turn up the kind of contentiousness and the uh, fighting for for what you know any one person wants, right? And I think there's some beauty in the fact that we have a system, democratic system in the United States, for getting through that process, right? Everybody has a voice, one one person, one vote, all these sort of things. The thing that we don't do is take strong strident policy positions there's something like forty thousand municipalities in the united states what would it look like if we tried to involve ourselves in the politics of forty thousand different different uh municipalities and jurisdictions because again we're on the local level our goal is to empower the local community to have their voice heard what do okay. they want what is their solution for the problem that their city is trying to to solve and there are experts in this space. There's people who you know, study the policies across the country, and we're working to, to connect those experts with our local communities so they can start off on uh, you know, in a, a more educated fashion. But at the end of the day, it just doesn't work unless people are engaged, involved, and educated. So we look at ourselves as facilitators, not policy people. Um, and, and guess I get what? That. So I, you facilitate that, pro uh, that process, but do you, do you facilitate with the policymakers as well? I mean, they obviously need to yeah. hear you and, and your chat, like what your like how much value you actually create in a community and what are the challenges are? Because sometimes when you look at these regulatory issues, they actually don't make sense in a lot, in a lot of ways. And now obviously the world is turning upside down with the pandemic and, 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 and you know, a lot of regulatory pressure will ease while people need tourists in the town, et cetera, et cetera. But, but how do, so, so can you make a concrete example in one of your <clears throat> projects in how you brought also the policymakers together. I'll, Dana, I mean, Dana, you want to jump in on Santa Fe or? Yeah. So 
it's snowing here in Denver. I just looked out the window. <laughs> um, Wonderful. So, I know it's crazy. It was 75 yesterday. Um, but the way that we bring policymakers to the table um, is by empowering, like Dave is saying, the locals to understand the process and the methods in which to speak to their local council members. So understanding how to ask for a meeting, um, understanding what uh, topics to bring up, how to position your talking points, understanding how to do your research on that council member, understanding what they care about and speaking to those things. So, you know, we're not necessarily acting as lobbyists um, by any means and speaking to city council. Um, you know, the role that the, the marketplaces, the OTAs play, they have their own government affairs and policy people that are doing, having some of those conversations to provide the perspective of the marketplace to the regulatory conversation. But that's not the role that Rent Responsibly is playing. It's empowering people to understand how to use their voice and how to identify what matters to them. And, and then also to bring back the perspective to them on what can they actually win pushing back against. Because sometimes when you wanna fight an entire regulatory uh, proposal um, that's coming down the, 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 the line, if you push back on every single piece, instead of just on the couple pieces that really matter, you may lose the whole fight. So having a, knowing where you can wiggle and where you wanna push back is part of the perspective that we help guide them through, but it's really about what matters to them so that they can have those conversations. Yeah, I think that makes a ton of sense and, and it gives a lot of clarity for me to the third piece that is very important within the entire ecosystem as well. So next to the marketplaces and the local communities and and also the governments as well but i think that makes makes a ton of sense now in in, in terms hey, of simon so yeah. can i can i add something here uh a shout out to dana honestly dana is working with these local alliances you're working with people who by and large never gotten involved they've never stepped foot in city hall they've never testified so there's a lot of this kind of educating and, and look dana and i didn't study this stuff we just care enough and have been doing it now, you know, for long enough to, to feel like we're dangerous. We can actually uh, try to help other people do it. But my favorite thing that happened recently, again, trying to get to some concrete stuff, is we helped the local leaders in Santa Fe come up with really cogent and specific talking points. And when those talking points that the leaders came up it was their their talking points they communicated it out to the folks that would be testifying at city hall and it was on zoom so you know, everybody was able to to have their voice heard and one of the most beautiful things we saw come as a result of that was the city i think it was the plan, planning commission actually you know because it's public it's on you know ever anybody can view it they said things like wow I never thought of the what we were about to regulate in these terms, or I never knew that you know so many jobs relied on what we were about to regulate. And so we're sitting here thinking, I, I'm I'm sitting in my own you know living room in uh, in Texas watching something happening on the other side of the country, and I'm just like, oh my God, this is beautiful, like it's working, you know. And and I just think in the absence of somebody trying to help these folks advocate for themselves. They kind of just passed the regulation right there. And now we're, you know, two years later, we're still stuck with it. But all we had to do was just prepare, show up, get it organized and a little win. It just feels like a little win that we're, we're standing on, on top of. And we want to see that happen, um, you know, year over year, session over session. And, and I think we can do it. I think we're cooking with gas, like I said. Yeah, that's a wonderful example, Dave. And I think everybody can relate to that immediately. Uh, it clearly paints the picture on what you guys are all about and what you're trying to achieve. And that's that's incredible. You know, we've had had so many initiatives of people trying to deal with this hyper local uh, challenge that we have as an industry. And it seems that Rent Responsibly is, is going totally in a different way uh, at this uh, hyper local aspect of our industry because you know one of the things that we said at AGL is that uh, post covid uh, hopefully there is a post eventually that that um, that fragmentation and 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 hyper local approach of our business is going to remain 
con consolidating this business is not possible. There is different business models now, like franchise and others we will definitely grow. But at the end of the day, the action is happening locally. And that's where you need help. But that's when you also need to have your understanding. And I think what's great also for me to think about, you know, how do you encourage hosts and property managers to actually think about their local communities? Who are the restaurants that my guests are going to? Who are you know the service providers that my my guests are using while they're staying with us you know think beyond the, the end of the table and think hey there is there is more to it and if i engage with those we can be stronger as a whole right everything in a hotel everything happens in one building like the food and beverage and 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 everything is is in one building right so so it's like you have to less worry about your community maybe you need to think about the best taxi company you use to pick up your guests but that's about it and the rest happens within one place, right? But in, in, in our industry, it happens in many, many different places. And and everybody needs to be aware of, of the value proposition that Vacation Rental has. And what does it do for my business if I offer kayaking or fishing or whatever? You know, I need to understand where my guests are coming from, what are they looking for? And because they're different type of guests as well who come to my community. So it's taken me literally this, this Retro's talks for me to realize what Rent Responsible is all about. And for that, I want to thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart because um, what you guys are doing, Dana and Dave, is absolutely outstanding for our industry. Uh, I'm so proud to be able to call you guys as friends. And we at AGL will support you all the way to be super successful in your endeavors. That seems to be a monster of a job. Maybe there's only one guy in the US who has a bigger job than you. Uh, but apart from that, I wish you only good luck. And and having that as a closing word, I would like to give you both sort of a closing message from from Dana and Dave to the entire short term rental industry and all its all all its community. To um, what to should they look out for going forward and and make rent responsibly successful? I'll go first. Um, I think the most important thing to understand is that we both feel Dana uh, at Effortless Rental Group, uh, family business here in Denver. She just stuck her hand up and said, "Hey, uh, I'm willing to take on the challenge of, you know." Uh, getting our community together because they had a regulatory issue here. Uh, myself, I've made my life uh, for the last seven years through something that originally was just uh, Airbnb. Oh, I'm an Airbnb host. And I realized that this is a world. First of all, it's existed long before Airbnb, but the ecosystem isn't just one company or one brand name. It is people's lives and they're your neighbors. And um, the one thing that I think if anybody's listening and wants a takeaway is that we're hell bent on solving this problem. We are passionate about something that most people shrug off or don't even know exists, short-term rentals, this entrepreneurial ecosystem. And if we have a mission, it's to make sure that the world understands who we are as uh, stakeholders in the short-term rental space what we bring to our communities, the, the experiences that our travelers have, and that we're also humble enough to know that we have no idea what we're in for, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're not gonna give up, and it's too important. There are too many people relying on the health and vibrancy of this industry, and there is no way uh, we're gonna let this good thing go to waste. Um, we have such a bright future, such a bright future. Um, what I would say that people should keep an eye out for um, as far as the future of Rent Responsibly is the amount of support that we're gearing up to provide individuals that have been considering getting involved but haven't yet taken that leap. I mean, to be doing what I'm doing is so fulfilling because I am creating the, the resources that my former self was looking everywhere for. And the idea that I'm able to um, put something together with this team that is gonna help others get off the ground and mobilize and be that much more impactful from the get-go is super exciting. So um, we've got a lot of really cool things that we're working on and that we'll be revealing in 2021. And I think it's the way that we can scale that's gonna help the, the industry at 
as a whole. So I think every player in this industry is going to find value in what we're doing to help people on the local level, because that's where it starts. It starts at the local level, without a doubt. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Dave Kraus. Thank you so much, Dana Lubner, for being on Red Shoes Talks tonight. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And one thing you can rest assured, AGL is a huge supporter in what you guys are doing. Take care and we wish you only lots of success and hopefully everybody else becomes a member of the advocacy of Rent Responsibly. Thank you so much. Thank you.